Imagine a submarine that glides through the ocean without a sound. No propeller noise, no gears, no mechanical hum. Just a smooth, ghost-like movement beneath the waves. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not. This concept is real, and it's called magnetohydrodynamic propulsion, or MHD. It replaces traditional engines with magnetic and electric fields that push water directly. For decades, it remained just a dream due to the massive power it required. But new advances in superconductors and energy systems might finally make it possible. This could be the beginning of a quiet revolution in motion. The birth of a silent drive. The MHD drive started as a bold idea. What if we could move a vehicle without any moving parts at all? Instead of spinning propellers or turbines, what if we could push water using invisible electromagnetic forces? The theory sounded perfect. Fewer parts meant less noise, less maintenance, and better stealth. In this system, two electrodes create an electric field, and powerful magnets create a magnetic field across it. When seawater containing charged ions passes through, the combined fields accelerate it backward. That push propels the vehicle forward. It's called the Lorentz force, and it's one of the simplest but most powerful laws in physics. The idea gained fame after being featured in the 1990 film The Hunt for Red October, where a fictional Soviet submarine used a caterpillar drive to move silently underwater. But reality wasn't far behind. In 1992, Japan introduced the Yamato-1, the world's first ship powered entirely by an MHD thruster. It worked exactly as designed. No propellers, no noise, only magnetic fields and current. Unfortunately, it could only reach 8 knots, or about 15 kilometers per hour. Why so slow? Because the system demanded enormous amounts of energy. The magnets had to be superconducting and kept at cryogenic temperatures using liquid helium. The ship needed massive diesel generators to power the thruster, which still produced acoustic noise. And the efficiency was terrible. Still, the Yamato one proved something vital. The theory was sound. The problem was not the physics, it was the power source. How it works. To understand this technology, we need to look at the Lorentz force in more detail. When a charged particle moves through a magnetic and electric field at the same time, it feels a sideways push. That push is what drives the fluid in an MHD thruster. Inside the drive, seawater flows between two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. An electric current passes through the water. Then, a perpendicular magnetic field crosses the current. The result is thrust, generated entirely by electromagnetic interaction. Using the right-hand rule, engineers can predict the exact direction of the flow, and therefore, the motion of the vehicle. Small MHD pumps have already been built in laboratories to move liquid metals, such as gallium, indium, and tin. These metals conduct electricity extremely well and flow smoothly. Because of this, they can efficiently convert electricity into motion, or, in reverse, convert heat into electrical power. That's why scientists believe that liquid metal MHD systems could one day power next generation nuclear plants. Imagine converting heat directly into electricity without any spinning turbines. Just pure, silent conversion. But seawater is much harder to work with. It's conductive, but not nearly enough. This difference changes everything. The seawater challenge. When using seawater instead of liquid metal, the same principle applies, but the performance collapses. Seawater has a much lower conductivity, so the system must work harder to move it. That means stronger magnets, higher currents, and greater power demand. In short, it's like trying to press syrup instead of oil. The Yamato one needed incredibly high currents and magnetic fields in the range of several Teslas just to move at low speed. The heat loss was immense, and the energy efficiency was extremely poor. Another problem came from electrolysis. The process of splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen gas when current passes through it. These gases formed bubbles on the electrodes, interrupting electrical flow and causing corrosion. The electrodes degraded quickly, reducing the drive's lifespan and performance. To tackle this, modern researchers use computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. It's a digital tool that simulates how fluids and gases behave inside the thruster. 
by tweaking channel shapes and flow geometry on a computer. Engineers can reduce turbulence, prevent bubble buildup, and increase efficiency before even building a prototype. They're also experimenting with new electrode coatings made from advanced ceramics and alloys that resist corrosion. Some materials can even self-heal tiny cracks over time. Solving these two problems, bubble formation and corrosion, would already make the MHD drive far more reliable. But one major issue remains, power, superconductors and nuclear energy. Powering an MHD system requires an energy source far beyond what ordinary engines can provide. The breakthrough came with the rise of high temperature superconductors, or HTS. These materials can carry 150 times more current than copper without losing any energy as heat. Even better, they can operate at higher temperatures than old superconductors, about Na 196 DCGC, cooled by liquid nitrogen instead of the more expensive liquid helium. An HTS magnet can generate magnetic fields over 20 tesla, strong enough to bend steel tools if brought too close. With this level of magnetic strength, the same MHD drive that once needed megawatts of power might now produce the same thrust using a fraction of the energy. That makes MHD propulsion much closer to practical reality. Still, the system requires a power source that can continuously deliver a massive current. That's where reactors come in. Submarines such as the Ohio class already carry S8G pressurized water reactors generating over 45 megawatts of power, more than enough to run a superconducting MHD drive. If integrated properly, a nuclear-powered MHD submarine could theoretically reach 20 knots at around 30% efficiency. Not record-breaking, but nearly silent. For military use, stealth often matters more than speed making this design extremely attractive. The US Navy and DARPA have quietly continued developing related technologies. HRL Laboratories reportedly built a seawater-resistant MHD pump using a new corrosion-proof electrode. Meanwhile, a 36-megawatt superconducting propulsion motor was developed for the Navy's DDG-1000 Zumwalt-class ships. This motor is half the size and weight of a traditional copper one and produces enormous torque with almost no noise. It proves that cryogenic, high-power systems are already reliable at scale. The next step could easily be a magnetohydrodynamic version, beyond the ocean. The beauty of MHD propulsion is that it's not limited to water. The same principles work in air and plasma, meaning potential applications in aerospace and spaceflight. NASA researchers are already experimenting with MHD systems that could control plasma flow around hypersonic aircraft. These designs could steer shock waves, reduce drag, and even harvest energy from superheated air during re-entry. Imagine a spacecraft that manipulates the plasma around it to reduce heat and generate power at the same time, all without moving wings or fins. It could be lighter, faster, and more controllable at extreme speeds. In space, similar ideas power plasma engines such as VASIMA, Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket. It uses magnetic fields to accelerate charged plasma, achieving higher exhaust velocity than any chemical rocket. If perfected, it could shorten interplanetary travel times dramatically. The link between ocean propulsion and space travel may seem distant, but both depend on the same principle using magnetic fields to control and move charged matter efficiently, the road ahead. Despite the progress, MHD propulsion still faces three massive barriers, power, materials, and scale. Even superconductors must stay cryogenic. Electrode coatings, though improving, still struggle with long-term corrosion. And while nuclear reactors can deliver the required energy, they add cost, complexity, and political concerns. But optimism is growing. Researchers now use AI-assisted fluid simulations to design channels that minimize loss. Compact cryocoolers are replacing bulky liquid nitrogen systems. Some experimental designs even combine MHD thrusters with ionized seawater to improve conductivity. Each year, the gap between theory and practice narrows a little more. In the future, silent underwater drones, next-generation submarines, and even plasma-guided aircraft might all rely on magneto-hydrodynamics. 
The same technology could power new cooling systems for fusion reactors, or generate electricity in deep space environments where moving parts aren't reliable. The possibilities go far beyond propulsion. The MHD concept represents something deeper, a shift toward motion powered not by mechanics, but by pure electromagnetic force. When energy becomes abundant and materials catch up, this could redefine how we move across land, sea, and space. Conclusion The Magneto hydrodynamic drive began as a scientific curiosity, a dream of silent propulsion without propellers or gears. For decades, it seemed impossible, limited by weak magnets and huge energy demands. But with modern superconductors, nuclear power, and advanced simulations, that dream is alive again. Whether it powers stealth submarines under the sea or plasma engines among the stars, MHD propulsion reminds us that the boundary between science fiction and reality is constantly moving. The next generation of motion may not roar or rumble. It may glide quietly, powered by the invisible strength of magnetic fields.